There's certainly a lot of feeling that standards have changed radically. It's hard to get information of this sort, and the information we have is on college students, and of course these represent the you end mean, of the You teenage. mean standards of sexual behavior. What they believe is right, right and wrong to I do. See, yeah. And uh, this is of, uh, of the late teenage or early 20s, and that would mean that when we think in terms of high school students, they're much, much more conservative in their views. Sure. But let's look now and see what some of these uh, attitudes are. Now, as far as premarital relations go, 11% in one high school or one college study felt that it was all right for both men and women. Another group uh, thought it was all right for men alone. 14% of uh, these college students felt that premarital relationships were all right for men. And then between engaged couples, 10% felt that this was all right and this was a standard that they would uphold. However, the vast majority of them felt that 64% uh, that no premarital relationships were right for either partner. Certainly we find adolescents, uh, their major concern really is uh, not so much, except we're in a minority, a small group of aggressive acting out adolescents, of course don't fit into this general pattern, but the large majority have their major concern in this area, preparation for marriage. And they do want uh, to see themselves as stable, successful marital partners and parents. And that goes for both the boys and the girls. And I think they view, many of them view, um, premarital relations as a threat to this position. And I believe that this, the statistics here bear that out. Actually, that 64% uh, for college groups would be higher in the high school level. Much higher. The problem, though, which is raised by, the, by this whole discussion, too, though, is how can they be helped to maintain the standards that they themselves would like to attain? And uh, that, I think, raises some pretty major issues. I wonder, be, uh, before we go into that, I wonder uh, if you could help us with this. It's quite obvious that some early marriages and maybe sexual relations that are not most useful for these young people are brought about even in very normal and uh, well-adjusted young people by the fact that they go steady and are too intimate too early. You've told us about that. But aren't there some other kinds of uh, sexual behavior and other causes besides this that we ought to think about? I think there's one very, very major one, and I think this demands the attention of our school people and all of us really. That is that, by and large, uh, the sexual delinquent is usually uh, not a well-adjusted uh, adolescent in general. And unhappiness and frustration in school or at home or in, in his general adjustment, uh, I think, often finds an outlet in sexual acting out. Sometimes the adolescent going a lot farther than he or, or she would like to. So that you can, I think, often correlate uh, the extremes of sexual behavior in adolescence with general unhappiness of which this is just one expression. What can parents and teenagers do to maintain the kind of controls and standards which the culture expects of them and which they themselves would like to have? Do you have any ideas on that? Well, I'm sure you have as many as I do. We can certainly think of some, though, and I would put at the top of the list of what we as parents and adults in our culture can do to help adolescents uh, in this total large and, and complicated area of sexual adjustment, I think the first thing we can do is set standards ourselves. Uh, I think uh, they look to us, and fostering relationships with them, relationships uh, through which they view, too, a high standards on the part of the adults who surround them. Secondly, I think there's a great need to foster free discussion with our adolescents, uh, to give them an opportunity to express their anxieties and their concerns, and uh, to ask the questions that they have uh, so much on their minds. I find today in some of our schools a tendency to sort of stifle uh, free discussion uh, with the feeling that this is... Uh, uh, keep the adolescent sort of in its place. The idea that if we counteract a, some delinquency you know, with repression and inhibition, we'll control them. I think uh, inhibiting free discussion of sexual matters, which are very vital to them, is uh, one way of raising or increasing their problems. Most of these kids know an awful lot. 
their information may not all be accurate. Sometimes uh, they astonish us with the information they have about sexual matters and about sexual behavior of other groups and other people. They follow some of these cultural patterns pretty carefully and know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And um, I think most of us underestimate how much they can understand and accept. Also how frank and direct we can be with them in these discussions. And along with that, there's another most important point, I think. Uh, adolescents must really be encouraged in their own uh, immature love affairs, in their crushes, in their sometimes pretty clumsy attempts at uh, finding some kind of uh, relationships for themselves. Now, uh, many parents, I think, uh, unwittingly, they, they, they do amuse us sometimes in their early efforts at, at uh, uh, establishing um, uh, their really male or female social role, and sometimes I think we belittle them and laugh at them, and uh, this is uh, most unfortunate. They need to have an opportunity for discussion of their, their own immature affairs, so to speak, and uh, encouraged in them, really. A lot and of sympathy from the sympathy adults. Sympathy, and uh, they're brokenhearted often when these crushes end in disaster, and they need a lot of encouragement and solace, really, instead of ridicule and, and laughing. There are a couple of other things, I, I believe, and uh, perhaps one of the most important is the our role as adults in helping adolescents who begin to uh, get out of control. Um, I think uh, very often it's our responsibility to cut down on the opportunities that they have for getting into trouble. Now this means specific guidance for them, it means uh, setting up planned recreation for them, it means to supervision uh, when they need it, and uh, that means knowing their friends, knowing where they go at the age of 14 and 15 and 16 too, I'm sure, and uh, uh, sometimes I believe we've tended to be a little lax about this level of supervision. Now I don't imply here that we blame parents for all children's troubles. Uh, in the best of circumstances, troubles can occur. And uh, just simply blaming uh, indiscriminately doesn't help. But at the same time, I think as adults we must f hold ourselves responsible for providing the kind of supervision uh, close contact. and close contact that the adolescent needs. Well, I think we could also say that one of uh, the ways we handle any problem that causes us as adults as much anxiety as sexual behavior does is to try to repress or try to give them a package of belief in all in one lump. This is the way it should be. And one important principle to me would be to work with them and talk with them and help them evolve standards rather than expecting them to take some standards ready-made. They have to work these things through and with help, they usually work them through in a pretty satisfactory way.